South Tianmen Team. Superhero Introduction www.zhaoshuyuan.com As far as the author knows, during their student years, many students wrote their own novels, while others only thought about the story situation in their minds. The author is also such a person. Through the narrative structure of Marvel Superhero Universe and Water Margin, covering 60% science fiction, 20% suspense, 1% love, 14% realism and life https forward slash forward slash www.zayashuan.com Preface You are listening at novelfull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, through the narrative structure of Marvel Superhero Universe and Water Margin, covering 60% science fiction, 20% suspense, 1% love, 14% realism and life anecdotes, 5% historical new series, and many other types of storylines. There are a total of more than 10 main characters, as well as secondary characters, or Easter eggs to pay tribute to some characters from movies, TV shows, or novels that the author has watched before. The use of pseudonyms by most of the main characters, such as Ah Chang, Xiao Wang, De Peng, etc., as the author is too lazy to choose a name, is also a characteristic. Some of the character designs are similar to those in the Marvel Avengers universe. This is not plagiarism, but rather an imagination of what would happen if superheroes were in China and their designs were more scientific, in order to explore the true Chinese style, with Chinese values, collectivism, realism, and adherence to the laws of physics in science fiction. Therefore, most of the stories in the novel are based on the superior system and realistic national conditions of contemporary China, so readers who purely want to read articles about superheroes saving the world alone should not have too high expectations. Among them, the South Tianmen Plan is an IP created by existing national aerospace state-owned enterprises, which is not plagiarism, because this plan already exists in reality. Therefore, as a future historical novel that imagines the real future, it is reasonable to use historical terms from reality as the background. As far as the author knows, during their student years, many students have their own novels to write, while others only think about some story situations in their minds and immerse themselves in them. The author is also such a person. In addition, the author's personality is often delayed, so it is possible to modify the published plot. Sometimes I don't update in the order of the novel, so I can pay attention to the update time at the bottom of each chapter. It's great to watch it again when I break the watch, and it's great to watch it again when I finish. However, readers probably don't have time, and my writing is boring. In addition, due to academic pressure, updates are intermittent, and even if it doesn't end up being good, it may take several to ten years to complete. Moreover, the author's writing style is not very good, and it is also the first time they have published their novel. They are lazy to describe details, and most of the time, they mainly focus on narration. There are also many hasty narratives like outlines, so many chapters will be relatively short. Let's make do with it first. After busy with studies, they will stop updating. After passing the high school and college entrance exams for a few years, maybe the writing style will also improve. In addition, due to the author's busy schedule, lack of professional expertise, and lack of social experience, sometimes they may make mistakes due to lack of time to search for information. However, I pursue the rationality of the story, so if there are any errors, such as historical errors, scientific errors, or unreasonable plot, please discuss and correct them with me. The author is still a student, so it is only written for fun and will not be continuously updated. The author's privacy rights cannot be violated. Outline You are listening at novelfull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, the outline contains spoiler content, and the author is carefully considering whether to publish it. First, reserve something here to prevent the inability to add separate volumes in the middle in the future. Beginning Item 0 Taoyuan Chapter 0 The Beginning of Taoyuan Affairs You are listening at novelfull.audio 
Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, during the Taiyuan period of Emperor Xiaowu of the Eastern Jin Dynasty, 376.396 AD, Wuling County. A small boat was sailing on the water of a small stream, with a fisherman sitting on board. In the thick fog, a peach blossom forest appeared on both sides of the stream, a beautiful mix of red, pink, and green. The boat continued to sail until it reached a pool at the end of the stream. Facing the cliff, the people on board got off and walked strangely towards a narrow opening on the cliff. They walked towards the light inside the cave, which gradually became wider until they walked out of the cave. In a hidden sinkhole, it was a paradise beyond the world seeing this, you may feel that the story I wrote seems to be out of stock. My label for this novel is indeed to describe a future story, but 5% of it is a new compilation of history. Most of the volumes in the novel are told in chronological order. If there is anything that is not told in chronological order, I will describe the background in the first chapter of this volume. The story of a member who later joined the Nanchiman team also starts from the Taiyuan period of the Eastern Jin Dynasty. Chapter 1 Assassination of Lu Ziji. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, during the Taiyuan period of the Eastern Jin Dynasty, a Chang was a small constable also known as an ancient police officer. Among his colleagues, there is a good friend named Long Tao. They have a very good relationship and work together. Both of them have excellent martial arts skills and are proficient in various weapons, far surpassing ordinary constables and almost reaching the level of the Ming Dynasty's royal guard several hundred years later. At this moment, the two and a few others were listening to a person being ordered by the emperor to go and carry out a mission a few days ago, the two were enjoying one of their few rest periods. Long Tao Have you heard? Recently, there have been rumors among the people that a person found a place while fishing. There was no war in that place, and the people inside came from the Qin dynasty and have been isolated from the world. A Chang don't believe these chaotic things. These days, there are so many rumors and wars. Where can we find such a peaceful place? Let's do our job well and don't lose our lives. As soon as I returned to my workplace, I heard from my colleague that an envoy from the court had come down and asked for two people by name and surname. The envoy said, would you be willing to be promoted? The two looked at each other, as long as they didn't violate the court's laws, who wouldn't want to. The envoy continued, recently, the court needs to form a special team to carry out a special task. You two have been selected, and after the task is completed, there will be a generous salary. So, the two of them went up multiple levels within a few days, until now, day one. The person in front of me, named Lao Shen A Chang asked Lao Shen, what task are we going to carry out? To assassinate some people and disguise their deaths as sick deaths, a few people all showed some fear upon hearing it. Why does the Grand Court carry out assassinations? I haven't actually assassinated a few people before. However, the person in front of them was also ordered by the Emperor, which can be considered indirectly the Emperor's will. It should not be much different from ordinary people who kill dead prisoners under orders from superiors, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Besides, there are high dot ranking officials and high salaries in front of them. Although the few people showed fear on their faces, they quickly calmed down and said, So who are we going to assassinate? I will assign two people to work in pairs and follow me to the room to pass on the target's information. Pair up and enter gradually finally, a Chang and Long Tao arrived, and the two of them entered. The room is not big, but it feels very oppressive. The ceiling is very low, and the entire room is only illuminated by a little candlelight. The corners of the room that cannot be illuminated by candlelight are in the darkness, seemingly with endless mechanisms. Upon receiving the information, I saw the bamboo slip prominently inscribed with the person's identity information, which began with three large characters. Lu Ziji Chapter 2 Assassination of Lu Ziji you are listening at novelfull.audio. 
Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, Lu Ziji. A Chang seems to have heard of this name. Although information dissemination technology was not advanced in that era, Lu Ziji, as a noble person, had a certain reputation, and a Chang, who had a wide range of knowledge and had friends in Nanyang County, still knew about it. But it is really suspicious that the court should kill such a person. Speaking of which, the people who handle affairs in this court are not foolish. In order to stabilize the people's hearts, they have all come up with assassination methods. Long Tao also heard Ah Chang talk about this person. What's the use of killing this person? You have no right to interfere, just do your job well. You are limited to three months. I want to receive news of his death, otherwise none of you can escape. Subsequently, the two of them went to Nanyang and temporarily stayed at a friend's house in a Chang, while starting a meticulous plan. Long Tao used to pick medicine in the mountains when he was a child and knew of a plant whose juice was colorless and tasteless. If someone took it, he would become terminally ill within a few days and die like a disease. This is his secret at the bottom of the box, he only shared it with Ah Chang, and it turned out to be practical this time. So the two of them collected some of these medicines, put them in a basket of food, and took this basket of food to Lu Ziji's house. According to the information, the two only know that Lu Ziji plans to visit a certain place and a specific location. Although they do not know, they can use the reason of inquiry to visit and then give this column of food as a gift to Lu Ziji. A Chang suddenly thought to himself. Lu Ziji is so noble, what if he doesn't receive a gift? So the two of them brought several pieces of food, one of which had a mark that they both knew about themselves. Only this one was poisoned, so they could use it as an excuse to share the food and deceive Lu Ziji into taking it. In order to prevent their whereabouts from being exposed, the two of them had a letter exchange with Lu Ziji in advance, agreeing to a secret meeting, saying that it was to prevent the place they were talking about from being heard by others, which would lead to the first to arrive. More than a month later. On the 45th day. On that day, the two climbed up the mountain forest where Lu Ziji was hiding and stepped into the front door of Lu Ziji's house. This place is very quiet and refreshing, with the sound of flowing water and the chirping of birds, as well as the beauty of the mountains and forests. Upon seeing Lu Ziji, I suddenly realized that he had a dignified appearance and extraordinary aura, truly possessing the spirit of a noble scholar. Omit a description of appearance here, a few people exchanged pleasantries and sat down. A Cheng distributed food, but Lu Ziji said he would not accept other people's food and would only eat what he had cultivated. A Cheng couldn't persuade him no matter how hard he tried, so he had to give up and find another way. Lu Ziji made tea for the three and then introduced the place he wanted to visit. Not long ago, I heard a news that it was in a place called Wuling County. It said that less than a year ago, there was a fisherman who mistakenly entered a peach blossom forest, walked through a cave, and behind it was an isolated place. That place was exactly the same as what I wanted. There was no chaos, no war. A Chang listened briefly and realized that Lu Ziji was very selfless. He quietly added venom to Lu Ziji's tea. Long Tao listened with great interest and seemed to have deeply yearned for it. A Chang, he quietly touched Long Tao, meaning that we are sent by the court. Don't listen recklessly, yearn for things that shouldn't be desired. The court is in chaos now. Fortunately, the fisherman reported to the government and couldn't be found again. Otherwise, the place might have been robbed, which is why I secretly met with the two of you. The fisherman is now locked up for fraud, and it is said that the two of you are skilled. I hope that two like dot minded people can come with me and secretly inquire about that person's information. After speaking, Lu Ziji took a sip of tea. The two quickly fooled Lu Ziji and used an excuse to leave. Day 46 The two bid farewell to a Chang's friend and, to ensure the success of their mission, went up the mountain again to visit Lu Ziji. Sure enough, Lu Ziji was already critically ill. Seeing the two of them, Lu Ziji was very regretful and wrote a letter, saying, 
I have a distant relative named Tao Yuanming who is living in seclusion in Lushan. Can you help me hand over this letter to him? If not, then let it go. The two of them looked at this bundle of bamboo slips and had to accept it. Soon, Lu Ziji passed away and the two of them repaired his tomb. Chapter 3 Letters and Silence You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, in the early morning of the 47th day On the way out of here, there is a forest. As we enter the forest, there are three big characters written on the stone tablet. Bagua Forest There is a dirt road sandwiched in the forest, and under the moonlight, it flows from the gaps between the leaves to the dirt road, just like a ray of light, fleeting in an instant. The darkness in the forest is invisible, somewhat eerie and terrifying. Occasionally, gusts of wind blow, causing a whining sound as the branches rub against each other. On the road, there were only two people, Ah Chang and Long Tao, and there was a deathly silence all around. Long Tao Brother, how should I handle this letter? You don't need to help him deliver it, do you? Definitely not allowed to be delivered. Don't let anyone except us know about a few letters. Give them to me and I'll destroy them. Are you too cautious? This matter was sent to us by the court, and even Lu Ziji's relatives don't know about it. They definitely can't see us. How could someone come after us? I'll give this letter to me, I'll definitely destroy it. Don't worry, trust me. It's better to be careful. Just as the two were arguing, a group of people suddenly emerged and surrounded them in groups. The two of them are like a fish in water, with a combination of two swords. With their superb martial arts skills, they have fought back and forth against more than ten people, seemingly invincible. As a result, the number of opponents continued to increase, and the two were outnumbered, gradually losing their physical strength. A Chang first used the unique secret code of the two of them to say to Long Tao, let's take action separately. Plus, today, if I can live, I will meet at the east gate of Kyoto at noon in seven days. If I don't come, then I may be dead. I must run, the farther I go, the better. It's best to destroy the letter, the kind that can't be left with dust. Seeing that Long Tao wanted to live and die together with him, he was overwhelmed and used a move to force the enemy to change the siege formation. Long Tao was kicked out of the formation. At the same time, a Chang was knocked to the ground, his head was severely injured, the internal structure of his brain was damaged, and his life gradually passed away. Just as Long Tao was about to turn around and attack, a powerful force struck, causing the fallen leaves to fly and roll up. Several people were blinded by the leaves. Immediately afterwards, several transparent sword-shaped objects emitting light flew over and pierced the assassin's body. One of the swords collided with a stone during the flight, as if it contained infinite energy, giving the stone a faster initial velocity than normal. It hit the back of a Chang's head, leaving an infinity-shaped scar. The energy contained in the stones gradually injected into Ah Chang's brain from this scar, reactivating his brain after a structural change in a daze, Ah Chang saw these swords finally fly back into a blurry figure. Long Tao slipped under his feet and then collapsed into a sphere with a diameter of about one meter, similar to the eight trigrams of Tai Chi later, he felt a powerful force and restored his original state in a safe area a few miles away. After the battle ended, the figure disappeared, and a Chang woke up with some changes in his mind. However, he didn't pay attention and searched for Long Tao, but found the wrong direction. Long Tao turned back to find a Chang, and thus the two were forced to separate after the two parted ways. Long Tao didn't know that Ah Chang's life and death were uncertain, so he had to act according to the agreement first. But due to his great longing for the peach blossom land, he did not destroy the letter. Instead, he went to Bichang and arrived a day earlier, in order to find a familiar and safe place in Kyoto before a Chang and his boss, and carefully understand the letter. On the evening of the 52nd day, Long Tao found a familiar inn and didn't notice that the familiar boss was somewhat frightened. 
In the room, the night was very quiet, with strong winds blowing. After closing the window, just as he had unfolded the bundle of bamboo slips a little, Long Tao suddenly heard a sound. Experienced, he realized that someone was coming to kill him. Subconsciously, he turned his head and dodged, only to see an arrow flying from behind and suddenly inserted into the ground in front of him. Long Tao quickly picked up his weapon and rushed out of the door, knocking down several minions. One of them saw the opportunity to sneak an attack, but was caught by Long Tao's backhand with a knife. He turned around and kicked him to the ground. Seeing that I couldn't leave the main entrance, I quickly went back to my room, jumped out of the window, climbed over the eaves and walls, and shuttled through the alleys. Subsequently, the clever Long Tao successfully diverted the pursuers and broke through the encirclement through a scheme. At this moment, Long Tao suddenly realized that the letter had been lost at some point. He had already keenly realized that the letter would be an important reason for his assassination, and he believed that a Chang had already broken through the encirclement and would investigate here. If we don't retrieve the letter, he and a Chang will face endless pursuit. Perhaps they will die inexplicably under the court's command, but if we go to retrieve the letter, a Chang will definitely replace him in finding the truth at noon on the 53rd day. A Chang returned to the capital city and waited for a long time. Instead of waiting for Long Tao, he waited for his superior, Lao Shen, who had sent them to assassinate him. A Chang dared not delay and informed Lao Shen of the task situation. However, after meticulous reasoning, for some reason, his reasoning ability felt improved since he was hit on the forehead. Ah Chang guessed that Lao Shen had a significant suspicion, so he kept a secret and didn't tell him about the letter. He only said that Long Tao had important evidence on him, and perhaps he had successfully destroyed it. Old Shen said coldly with a hint of sympathy, Long Tao, he's dead. Chapter 4 Cases and Wants You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals Window Ads by Google Push, Long Tao is dead. A Chang's brain was completely blank. He and Long Tao met a long time ago, and as brothers, they chose to work as constables together, working together to uphold justice. Two people together, what major disasters and difficulties have they not experienced? I didn't expect that after only accepting one task, there would be such a big change within two months. This day is the 53rd day of the start of the task. A Chang still held a lucky mentality, believing that it was not so easy to kill him with Long Tao's martial arts skills. Until Lao Shen took him to the crime scene Long Tao was right in front of him, but he turned into a cold corpse. A Chang was extremely sad, but had to endure the grief and conduct an investigation of the crime scene. This is a dead end, surrounded by high walls and wooden beams and bamboo tiles that showcase the prosperity of Kyoto. However, there is no one in the dead end. Although it is early in the morning and the sky is already bright, it still feels cold, gloomy and desolate. In theory, to avoid suspicion, he cannot participate in this case. But Lao Shen still asked him to inspect the scene, which can be considered as his final farewell. Long Tao was hit by an arrow in the back, apparently shot from the roof by someone. A Chang searched for a while, but couldn't find the letter. Perhaps it had been destroyed, maybe not. If not destroyed, A Chang is also considering whether the true culprit can be traced through this letter. Suddenly, A Chang noticed that there was a code left at the scene that only the two of them could understand each other, pointing to a place where the code told him that the letter was hidden. Originally, after discovering that the letter was lost, Long Tao resolutely decided to go back and look for it. After finding the letter, Long Tao quickly followed the original path and prepared to escape, only to find that the road he had just arrived was already blocked. I can only take a detour, enter the alley, and run around in the winding alley. Suddenly, a group of people rushed out ahead. Long Tao turned around and wanted to run, but a group of people rushed out from behind. Long Tao drew his sword and used his superb martial arts skills to forge a bloody path before continuing forward. Just as he walked into a dead end and wanted to turn around and leave, 
He was ambushed by a crossbowman on the roof of Chang did not tell anyone about the secret code, but quietly erased it. Afterwards, A Chang returned to his residence and didn't dare to find Xian because he was worried about being monitored. I thought this thing had just passed, but Ah Chang spent a peaceful day in sadness. What he didn't know was that on this day, all the assassins who participated in the assassination except for him died, either in an accident or in an untimely death. Until evening, Lao Shen invited him to drink a drink to celebrate his achievements and also to comfort him. Ah Chang. Why am I the only one, and the others? Lao Shen said, they haven't come back yet. When they come back, they don't concentrate anymore. The goal is too big. Let's have a meal alone to celebrate, and also to remember Long Tao who sacrificed himself. Didn't make it back. Really. A terrifying thought suddenly arose in a Chang's heart, remuneration, I will give it to you tomorrow. His pension, please pass it on and stay here to work. I believe he will be proud of you, Lao Shen interrupted Ah Chang's thoughts. Ah Chang hesitated a bit, but at the same time, he was also thinking about how to escape and retrieve the letter without being known. Don't worry, no one will blame you. Only you know and I know about your mission this time. I believe that the letter was destroyed by him long ago, and he won't harm you, will he? A Chang nodded thoughtfully, but suddenly froze for a moment. He didn't tell Lao Shen that it was a letter either. A Chang's head is about to explode. Zhao Zhuyuan.com on the other hand, Lao Shen was stunned when he saw A Chang. He was about to ask what A Chang had thought of when he suddenly realized that he had slipped his tongue, so he quietly placed his hand on his weapon. A Chang also quietly began to explore his weapons. The black clouds gradually descended, and the sky gradually darkened. Suddenly, the window lit up for a moment, then dimmed again. A few seconds later, thunder erupted. Boom boom. Thunder exploded, and with the sound of thunder, the two immediately drew their swords and engaged in a battle. At this moment, many swordsmen rushed in outside the door. It turned out that old Shen Yen had invited him with the intention of silencing him. A Chang quickly faced the enemy, and after fierce battles, although he was outnumbered, he always felt a magical force that made him invincible. In the end, he successfully killed Lao Shen and broke through the encirclement. Later, A Chang took advantage of the darkness and pursued the secret code all the way, finally finding the letter on a rooftop. Originally, after being sandwiched back and forth and breaking through the encirclement, Old Shen knew he would definitely die in such a situation again, so he quietly hid the letter and then tried to break through. Until he ran into that dead end after being shot, the dying Long Tao left a secret code subsequently, A Chang found a colleague who had been a constable before and recounted the truth behind it. The colleague chose to believe him and A Chang was able to hide in his colleague's house. My colleague told him that those people who were previously selected as assassins have not returned without exception, and they are probably unlucky either. Now A Chang has become the only person who survived, and only he can find the truth the next day, A Chang disguised himself and went out to check the situation. As expected, there were portraits of him posted everywhere on the road, accusing him of murdering his colleague Long Tao and his boss, he's wanted. Chapter 5 the Story of Peach Blossom Spring You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, on the 54th day A Chang flipped through the letter and roughly understood the story of Peach Blossom Land. There is a person in Wulin County who makes a living by fishing. One day he rode along the stream, forgetting the distance of the journey. Suddenly encountering a peach blossom forest, within a few hundred steps on both sides of the stream, there were no other trees in the middle. The flowers and plants were fresh and beautiful, and the falling flowers on the ground were numerous and mixed. The fisherman was very surprised by this. He continued to walk forward, wanting to reach the end of the forest. At the end of the peach blossom forest is the source of the stream. The fisherman discovered a small mountain with a small entrance, inside which there seemed to be a faint glimmer of light. 
the fisherman got off the boat and walked in through the entrance of the cave. At first, it was very narrow and could only accommodate one person to pass through. After walking dozens of steps again, it suddenly became bright and open. The land in front of the fisherman is flat and wide, with houses arranged very neatly, as well as fertile fields, beautiful ponds, and plants such as mulberry trees and bamboo. The paths in the fields are well connected, and the sounds of chickens and dogs barking one after another. People come and go in the fields to cultivate and work, and both men and women wear the same clothes as people outside the peach blossom spring. Both the elderly and children are content and enjoy themselves. The people here were very surprised when they saw the fisherman and asked him where he came from. The fishermen all answered one by one. The people here invited him to their home as a guest, set up wine and killed chickens to entertain him. The other people in the village heard that such a person had arrived and all came to inquire about the news. They said that their ancestors came to this isolated place with their wives, children, and neighbors to avoid the war during the Qin dynasty. Since then, no one has left, so they have been isolated from the outside world. The villagers asked the fishermen what dynasty it is now, but they didn't know about the Han dynasty, let alone the Wei and Jin dynasties. The fisherman spoke out everything he knew, and the villagers all sighed with regret upon hearing it. The others each invited the fishermen to their own homes, each offering their own delicious wine and food to entertain him. After staying for a few days, the fisherman bid farewell to the villagers. The villagers told him, the situation here is not worth telling the people outside. After the fisherman came out, he found his own boat and went back along the way he came, marking everything everywhere. When he arrived at the county town of Wuling, he went to pay respects to the governor and shared his experience. The prefect immediately dispatched personnel to follow him, searching for the marks made by the fisherman earlier. Eventually, he got lost and could no longer find the way to the peach blossom spring. After reading this letter, A Chang suddenly felt that his brain was involuntarily thinking a lot, and the scar on the back of his head felt a faint pain. Later, in order not to implicate my former colleagues, after reading the letter that day, I quickly left the city before noon and rushed back to my friend's house in Nanyang day and night. Chapter 6 Wuling County You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, on the 57th day, a Chang came to Nanyang again, rested at a relative's house, borrowed some money, and set off from Nanyang the next day. On the 61st day, a Chang finally arrived in Wuling County. This place is located among the mountains, with a dense river network in the valley, and it is indeed easy for boats to get lost in the river. A Chang disguised himself as a secret to gather information here. Strangely, his wanted notice had already been sent to this county town, as if it had been specially posted there. In theory, this county town is not important, it won't spread here so quickly. On the 62nd and 63rd days, A Chang kept inquiring about the news of the fishermen. During this period, A Chang's brain has been experiencing a strange sensation, as the scar pain on the back of his head is diminishing, as if energy is entering his brain from there. On the afternoon of the 63rd day, A Chang finally found a fisherman named B who was fishing. Fisherman B said, I once had a neighbor who, like me, was a fisherman. Ever since I got lost while fishing, legend has it that I found a strange place. It is said that this place is like a fairyland on earth, with no wars or disturbances, and the people inside are isolated from the world. Then he returned and went to pay his respects to the governor. Later, the governor followed him around but couldn't find him, so he became furious and, under the pretext of fraud, he was arrested and imprisoned. Later on, I didn't know what he was like. There were rumors that he was going to be executed, but I don't think it would be enough subsequently, Fisherman B went out to fish, and A Chang requested to go and have a look with him. Fisherman B agreed. After wandering on the river for a long time, I did not find the peach blossom spring. A Chang had no choice but to return to the hotel. The next day, A Chang bribed the guards and successfully infiltrated the local prison. 
The light in the cell was very low, not very big, dark and humid, and there were only a few prisoners. A Chang searched the prison cell all over, but couldn't find any trace of the fisherman. The clue is completely broken A Chang was preparing to leave the cell in disappointment. Where exactly is the truth? Suddenly, a large number of officers and soldiers rushed into the prison cell and surrounded Ah Chan, catching turtles in a jar. Originally, the guard not only wanted to collect Ah Chang's money, but also wanted to receive a reward and reported him. A Chang has no choice but to be caught is to die, and to resist is to die. It's better to fight a bloody path. In order to protect himself, he could only fight back and rise up in rebellion. After a bloody battle, A Chang finally broke through the encirclement and escaped from the prison. Under the pursuit of the soldiers, he curved around and escaped from the city. But the pursuers are still relentlessly pursuing. A Chang borrowed a boat and quickly sailed along the stream. The turbulent water pushed the boat, and the stream merged into a wider rapids, causing the boat to sail into the valley. There was only a waterway in the valley, so the pursuers had to grab three more ships and catch up with a Chang. A group of people engaged in fierce battles on several boats in the rapids. A Chang relied on his superb martial arts skills to jump back and forth on several ships, kicking many pursuers into the water, and using his superb sailing skills, causing both pursuers to hit rocks. Another pursuer was relentlessly pursuing. A Chang can only hope for a miracle to happen and seek refuge in the Peach Blossom Spring. But A Chang thought again and couldn't let the pursuers disturb the peace of Peach Blossom Spring. In contradictory psychology, miracles did not occur. On the contrary, it made A Chang lose his composure, and his boat couldn't dodge and collided heavily with a reef, instantly falling apart. A Chang jumped into the water in time to avoid breaking into pieces. Amidst the turbulent river water, Chang struggled to swim to the shore and finally regained his life. But at this moment, the pursuers also docked the ship and captured Ah Chang, who was already exhausted and unable to fight. Chapter 7 The Disaster of Imprisonment You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, since A Chang was captured on the 64th day, the court has specially sent several people to escort him back to the capital. That small team caught the people of A Chang, for some unknown reason, and was ordered to stay in guard. On the 67th day, passing through Nanyang again, the people sent by the court were ready to take action, attempting to silence A Chang. At this moment, A Chang's relatives in Nanyang happened to pass by and the person who was escorting him did not take action. Along the way, these people have been preparing to take action, but they either encountered beasts, demons, or passers-by and acquaintances. It's like someone is secretly protecting A Chang. Finally, on the 71st day, A Chang was taken to Kyoto prison alive. Young man, how did you get in? A person with gray hair walked out of the darkness of prison, and the torture in prison had made it impossible to see his age. A Chang thought that he was going to die anyway, so he told him the truth and falsehood of the matter. The person heard Ah Chang's story and suddenly couldn't speak, with mixed feelings in his heart. What's wrong with you? I implicated you, the person sighed and said apologetically, I shouldn't have told you about Peach Blossom Land in the beginning. I don't think you know much about it. I've also guessed something while in prison lately, and I'll tell you. A Chang instantly widened his eyes and turned to look at the person, saying, Was see.